Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red bombardment deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around this powerful 6-mana mythic rare enchantment from Streets of New Capenna, saying whenever we cast our first instant or sorcery spell each turn, including the opponent's turn, we get to exile an instant or sorcery card at random from our graveyard, and then we copy each card exiled with bombardment, and we can cast any number of the copies without paying their mana costs. So this is an insane card once you see it in action, and all it needs is some early interaction so we can survive long enough to get it in play, and then also plays very nicely with the 4 mana cards that draw and make treasure tokens like Big Score from New Capenna, and of course Unexpected Windfall from the Forgotten Realms, so these can help us ramp into Bombardment, and then are also excellent to potentially play for free, as they allow us to chain together more spells, and then because they're also both instants, allows us to cast them in the opponent's turn, so we can trigger Bombardment both in our turn and then once again in the opponent's turn to completely go off. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with some cheap removal at 1 mana with 4 copies of Strangle, dealing 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker at sorcery speed, and 2 copies of Play with Fire, dealing 2 damage to any target at instant speed, the fact that it's an instant a big advantage again with Arcane Bombardment, and this can also go upstairs to potentially burn the opponent out, which becomes relevant once the opponent no longer has anything in play, and we just want to close out the game instead. At 2 mana, full play set of Expressive Iteration, not typically a card we want to play on turn 2, but can be a nice source of card advantage as well. And then Demon Bolt can deal 4 damage to a creature or planeswalker, can foretell it, so a nice turn 2 play, and then later just a single red can maybe deal with some 4 toughness creatures that survive Strangle, cards like Adelin out of the Mono White deck for instance. And then Magma Opus also has a great synergy with Bombardment, as we can discard it on turn 2, making a treasure token which helps us ramp, and then later in the game we can potentially exile it for free with Arcane Bombardment, giving us a powerful 8 mana instant, dealing a whole bunch of damage, drawing cards, tapping things down, and then of course we can also just cast it for 8 mana if we maybe ramp into it using our other treasure makers. And then at 3 mana, full play set of Seismic Wave, also an overperformer against the white aggressive decks, as it can potentially deal with a whole bunch of 1 toughness creatures, and we're also pretty happy casting it for free with Bombardment, as it at the very least deals 2 damage to the opponent. And then at 4 mana we've got our Treasure Makers, and then a full play set of Burn Down the House, also very synergistic with Bombardment, as it can function as a sweeper early on, dealing 5 damage to each creature and each planeswalker, but if we exile it with our Bombardment, we always have the option of making 3 1-1 one -one Devil tokens, so it's never going to be a dead card, even if the board is empty. And then our mana base includes a few creature lands with the Den of the Bugbear, and then a few channel lands as well with Soaring City and Crucible, and then mostly red mana, as we're only really splashing blue for Iteration and Magma Opus. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Hopefully pick up some 2 or 3 mana play in the meantime. And then Windfall sets up Bombardment nicely. And we can play this on red, facing some sort of Asper deck. Could be Control, which is not great news for Arcane Bombardment, as they might have multiple answers to it. Opponent passes. Could have cast Play with Fire face end of turn, just to use this cry essentially, but for now we're still happy to draw lanes. So this cry is less valuable. It's going to be Kaito. And it's going to make a ninja, so I can play with fire Kaito before he phases out. Strangle can deal with the ninja. Seems reasonable. Did two for one ourselves. But now future Kaitos can draw extra cards right away. Wedding announcements. Alright, so it's more of a tokens deck. And we'll windfall. Could windfall now. Don't expect to want to kill the 1-1 token necessarily. So I guess we'll wait. 
and then, yeah, next turn we could already play bombardments, although, again, our opponent might have ample answers to it. So hopefully they tap out and we get to extract some value out of our bombardment first. Or we could wait until we can play bombardments and at least another spell on the same turn. Announcement triggers. Can probably discard Demon Bolts. Right, burn down the house could be fun. And a backup bombardment. Okay, so now I don't feel as bad if they maybe exile one of them. With, let's say, a Vanishing Verse. They might have the Wandering Emperor that they want to flash in end of turn. And then we'll see what happens. Alright, there's a Vanishing Verse, as expected. Burn down the house could also be a nice answer to a bunch of tokens. There's a main phase, Wandering Emperor. So Burn Down the House also deals damage to Planeswalkers, so we'll clean up the board. Remember your training. And do I want to cast it now? Do I wait one more turn? Could still catch the Wandering Emperor next turn if it goes up to 5 loyalty. So maybe we're not in a hurry. And then I could try another Bombardment. And hope that doesn't get removed. Yeah, could wait to again try and get the immediate value out of it by making some treasures first. We're also close to just casting Magma Opus. So we'll try this and uh, cross our fingers that they don't remove it. And then we should be able to take over pretty easily. Another Vanishing Verse. That's too bad. Opponent foretells. Not sure what it's gonna be here. Could be maybe a Doomscar. Could be Starnheim Unleashed. Which is a reason to hold on to Burn Down the House, but then Wandering Emperor would get out of range. So let's Iteration, and then if we find an extra land we get to burn down the house as well without using our treasure. I'm never done for good. And then now we're on the Magma Opus plan. Spider Queen, okay. So, probably want to upkeep Magma Opus. So we can tap down some lands as well. And then we can deal one to Spider Queen, two to the token, and one face. And tap down some lands. Tap down the white sources. And, uh... That should work. Could have also tapped down the remaining spider token. But I think denying mana is more important. You win this round. But I my power is for annihilation. So two cards left in hand. A reservoir Kraken. Can be quite effective against us, as we don't have many creatures to tap it down. No need to tap it down now though. So that's why they're maybe playing blue. Okay. So, 7-7. Seven, seven. We can attack into it and then Seismic Wave. But of course they can just take it and then I don't have a great solution, so I probably have to let it attack. Take a bunch of Trample damage. And then Seismic Wave. We have to pay the Ward as well. So I guess I can still Iteration if I'd like. Burn down the house. Could also be useful. Although not enough to deal with a Kraken if they take four. But I think we still put it in hand here. I 
If her opponent's plan is to kill my elemental, I guess I would just be dead. So I might have to instead tap down the Kraken in the opponent's turn. And then I can try and take it out with Burn Down the House. Plus maybe Seismic Wave. Although that's going to cost me 10 mana total. Which means I would have to Windfall to have enough mana to do so. Alright, we'll see what happens. If they kill my elemental before Kraken triggers, then we would just be dead. Would have been a reason to make some devil tokens with Burn Down the House instead. So I think the safest play is just to tap down. Take three. Or I could Windfall first. Didn't think it matters. Windfall, discard, windfall. Do I want to play with fire, save myself three damage? And doesn't seem needed. Opponent passes. And uh, could windfall again. Also doesn't really seem necessary. Okay, strangle can also go after Kraken. So I'll start by attacking. Could maybe see another Wandering Emperor. Opponent takes it. And then we want to burn down the house, dealing 5 damage. And then I could either strangle or play with fire. Guess we can uh, play with fire here. And pass it back. Windfall can discard islands next turn. And hopefully find another arcane bombardment. Iteration's great too. Pick up another burn down the house. And then probably find picking up an extra land here instead. We'll main phase windfall. Right, nothing too exciting. Could make some hasty devils, don't think that's worth it. Opponent's not doing much, maybe holding a fistful of removal. Which is a reason to make sure we can get immediate value out of our bombardment if we find it. Our opponent finally pulls the trigger on the gate. Do I want to burn down the house? Make devils? Sure. Opponent with another negate. So they were sitting on those for a while. All happy we managed to bait those out. There's Bombardment. Although there's no great target for Seismic Wave at the moment. So it would be a bit of a waste. So I think we should wait until our opponent presents something worth killing. Wandering Emperor end of turn. Can answer the token with Seismic Wave. The of battle, then like water. And I should probably do it now, before they can flash in another Emperor and put a plus one counter on it. So now I can Bombardment plus Triangle. And hopefully hit something juicy. And big score we could play in the opponent's turn to trigger Bombardment once again. Iteration's great. Finding another Bombardment. So we're doing it. And then do I want to strangle the Wandering Emperor? Doesn't seem super needed. So 
So that pluses. We've got the edge in this fight. Opponent foretells what could be another Doomscar, which is not going to do much against our deck. And then do I want a big score, or do we want to get another Bombardment in play first? That sounds better. Big score. Discard Strangle. Gets Iteration plus two more spells. And Strangle deals with Emperor. Try not to miss me. We can Windfall. And then Iteration. And uh, this one's not too exciting. And big score we can play in the opponent's turn as well. So, play lands and pass. And then would love to find Magma Opus to close out the game. Getting low on cards in library, but we don't have to cast the cards with Bombardment. Seeing the flexibility of Burn Down the House, making Devils now. And uh, what else do we want here? I guess we'll go for Windfall, discarding Soaring City. Big score, discard Iteration. And Iteration. Finding Magma Opus. Down to eight cards in library. So I guess we'll magma opus end of turn. Targeting the opponents. Tapping down our lanes. Alright, opponents could have saw it coming for that one. That's okay. Do I want a seismic wave? Probably not necessary. One tap. And then I could burn out the house main phase, make some more devils. Trigger bombardment a bunch of times. And this time I'll decline to cast the card draw spells. But we can make more devils. Play with fire, can go upstairs. And sure, magma opus on top. So we'll decline the rest. And then our opponent concedes. Too many burn spells and devils coming their way. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Just missing a few treasure makers to ramp into bombardment ahead of schedule. Sentinel, we can strangle. There's our treasure maker. Turn to foretell Demon Bolts and be on our way. Magda, we can eventually kill with Seismic Wave. But we'll get to make a treasure token here. So hopefully no turn 3 Chariot. It's gonna be a Fable of the Mirror Breaker instead. So Seismic Wave deals with both, and might as well let the opponents discard with Fable before we show them Seismic Wave, unless they have Deadly Dispute in their deck, which is very much possible, so maybe I should just kill both now. So that cleans up nicely. And then, yeah, the plan is big score into Bombardments. And then having a 1-mana spell to play with a Bombardment right away is also much better. Opponent discards Metook Massacre, not going to be great in this matchup. And Renan 7, okay. 
making a 4-4 tree folk dies to demon bolt and uh, next turn we could burn down the house as well so I don't think I have to kill the token now necessarily so we'll pass with big score available alternatively I can iteration plus demon bolts but that doesn't deal with the planeswalker unless we demon bolt Ren I think we're better off sticking to big score and then as long as I draw another land I should be able to Bombardment and Demon Bolts. Of course the Tree Folk's going to be a little bit too large at that point. So maybe I'm still better off going for Iteration. Alright, fine. And then Hands will put Magma Opus. And play Mountain. And then I'll just kill the Tree Folk now. And then next turn we can clean up with Burn Down the House, potentially. Avoid taking too much damage. Don't expect them to have much interaction for Arcane Bombardment, so... Just gotta make sure we get to the late game, and then we should be able to take over. Renan 7 finds Triple Lands, and now... Blood Sky Massacre. Not to be confused with a new Red Black Saga. Okay, so Burn Down the House looks awesome here. Seeing the Courier Briefcase. But it doesn't look like her opponent's playing five colors necessarily, although I guess World Tree can enable it. Okay, is it time for Bombardment? Feels a little strange not getting any immediate value out of it, but I think it's fine. Opponent can draw three end of turn. One way they could answer Arcane Bombardment is with Buseju, the channel land. So Blood Sky Massacre didn't really accomplish much. So I guess they're more of a tokens deck than anything else. Spider Queen makes sense. I'm hungry. Won't you stay for dinner? but should be able to answer it pretty easily. So we might see them draw cards instead of making spiders if they fear a board wipe. Even just a seismic wave could deal with all the spiders. Aren't I the generous one? Another bombardment. Uh, let's not get too greedy. And maybe go for windfall. And then I think I actually discard Magma Opus, strangely enough. That way I can big score in the opponent's turn as well. Or I could discard Bombardment, keep Magma Opus. But we might get lucky and actually cast Magma Opus for free, so... Let's do that instead. Uh, we hit Demon Bolts, I guess we'll clean up Spider Queen. And then we can big score in the opponent's turn, discarding one bombardment seems fine. We'll get to cast a free demon bolts and maybe something else. So the question is do I take four and wait for them to maybe play more creatures that we can kill? Alright, opponent playing the devouring chaos. Also a good target for demon bolts. So I guess we'll uh Fire this off now. And see what we exile. And we hit Seismic Wave, perfect, so Seismic Wave goes upstairs, finishes off the spiders, Demon Bolt deals with Hidetsugu. Opponent does indeed play Deadly Dispute, which we played around earlier. Okay, how much mana are we working with? Not quite enough for Bombardment plus Burn Down the House. So I could Burn Down the House just to make some Devils, or we can make sure we get more value by playing another Bombardment first. That seems fine. There's nothing in play for me to kill with Demon Bolts and Seismic Wave. 
So might as well wait and then hope to exile some of our card draw spells, Magma Opus, Iteration. We've got both Windfall and Big Score. Opponent does have five cards in hand, so yeah, possible they have some interaction for Arcane Bombardment at this point. It's going to be a Riveteer's Charm for card advantage, finding their own Burn Down the House and a Deadly Dispute. So they'll have to make use of those now. So we'll probably take three, and then they can sacrifice a Devil Token. And another briefcase makes a citizen. And there's the dispute. Okay, so our opponent's keeping up with card advantage here. Briefcase, deadly dispute. But there's another bombardment. So one mana short of playing it and burn down the house. So I think we should just make our own devils. And then we get to trigger Bombardment, so we clear their Devils before our Devils enter the battlefield. Although I guess we hit another Burn Down the House here. That's fine. And then Iteration's perfect. So... Seismic Wave goes upstairs. And Demon Bolt doesn't really matter. So their Devils can take out two of my Devils. But we've got another three Devils incoming. Opponent's just going upstairs instead. And Iteration bricks off finding three lands. Okay, so... We can activate then if we'd like. Yeah, I mean at this point we're out of non creature spells in hand to trigger bombardment, so maybe this is the approach. And really hoping for any instant or sorcery next turn. Although the devil tokens might be able to cross the finish line if our opponent wipes aboard. We've got six damage to close out the game. They did show us a meat hook massacre earlier. So that's potentially a way to gain some life, but they still have to be careful with the damage from my Devil Tokens. It's gonna be their own Burn Down the House, making three Devils. Ziatora, the Incinerator. Okay, can sacrifice a creature, make three Treasure Tokens, and deal damage as well. But still don't see how they're surviving the incoming attack. Devil Token can just go upstairs. And a Seismic Wave will trigger Bombardment. And uh, I guess we have enough to play another Bombardment first, because why not? And get a whole bunch of triggers. Make more tokens. And yeah, this should be more than enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Can uh, maybe discard Magma Opus on 2 and then Iteration on 3 to hit our land drops. And then having Magma Opus in the graveyard for Bombardment is excellent. The dream curve in this deck is turn 2 Opus, turn 3 Windfall or Big Score to play Bombardments on the following turn already. Opponent Red-Green. And we did pick up a Windfall. Generous Visitors, so this could be a Runes deck. And yeah, they could potentially make a very large creature out of nowhere, which can potentially survive our burn spells. So it could be a concern. Now I could go for Windfall here. And then if we hit our land drops 
already play Arcane Bombardment. Or we could Iteration and hope to find some cheaper interaction to deal with a Generous Visitor, which is also reasonable. Of course, the turn we play Bombardment, we won't be able to trigger it right away, but the Naya Runes deck, to my knowledge, doesn't play many answers to Bombardment. Maybe a Borrowed Time, but it's usually more of a green-white thing. So, I think we try and go big here with Windfall. By keeping up mana, we also disincentivize our opponent from playing any runes on their visitor. Because they might get two for one. Opponent does have the Naturalists. That happens. And they're actually playing a Rune of Speed. Well, I might be able to punish it here if we find a play with fire. Seismic Wave, not quite. So we're taking six, although we could stabilize with Burn Down the House. Did not find an extra land to play Bombardment yet. Another Seismic Wave. Alright, so this is a little awkward. I don't know if I simply want to burn down the house and waste all my treasures. Might have to iteration, go digging for extra land, hope to find Strangle as a cheaper removal spell, and take it from there. Another burn down the house, so I think we just take the two lands. And then I could Seismic Wave if really needed. But hopefully, we don't have to. There's a Runeforge Champion. Okay, do we let them cast the runes for free? I guess we do. And then punish them with a Seismic Wave. Or we can take the hits, untap, and burn to wipe the board. Just worried about Generous Visitor here. It's gonna be another Visitor. At least that one we can kill for free with Seismic Wave. Alright, Rune of Speed. They will get two triggers, hopefully targeting some creatures we can kill. So they're putting both counters on Visitor to kind of protect Naturalist and Champion. Yeah, that's reasonable. I think we kill Visitor here. So both Visitors dealt with. Opponent doesn't draw off Rune of Speed. But they still have their powerful combo of Naturalist and Champion. But now they should stay within range of Burn Down the House next turn. Another Rune of Mites. Okay. So, Naturalist up to 4 Toughness. And I don't think we can afford to Bombardment first, so... Let's wipe the board. And hopefully we get a turn off where we can establish our enchantments before we keep casting more spells. Hallowed Haunting, that's concerning, but it does give us the turn off we needed here. And then as long as they can't remove Bombardment, I think we have enough removal to keep up with their tokens. Especially with double Seismic Wave and Burn Down the House in hand. Rune of Sustenance, their own lands. Just to make a token and draw a card. Alright, and we get to untap. This is huge. So, can maybe start with a big score. Discarding, eh, I guess, land for now. And then I can Seismic Wave in the opponent's turn still. And we hit a Magma Opus, which we exiled earlier in the game. So... I guess we'll take out the token here, just to be safe. And then type down some lanes. Three to our opponents. And now that we have Magma Opus exiled with Bombardment, we'll get to cast it pretty much every turn. Including the opponent's turn, as long as we can play an instant, which is why Play with Fire as a 1-mana instant and Seismic Wave are so valuable. 
So yeah, I don't think this game is going to be close as long as we can keep our bombardment. And sure, we'll seismic wave. Make another 4-4, four, four, draw more cards, hit an iteration as well. And how about another bombardment? And yeah, our opponent has seen enough, this is just too much to overcome. Awesome, so managed to demolish the Naya runes deck, which can be one of the scarier decks in standard once it gets to go off, and our opponent had a very functional draw. So yeah, very happy with how this bombardment deck played out. At first it reads like one of those janky mythics, like Thousand Year Storm from a few sets back, but once you actually see it in play, you realize how powerful this enchantment actually is, and it might actually have what it needs to compete in standard, as shown in these games. And uh, yeah, overall, just a solid build with early interaction to keep up, then some treasure tokens for ramp, which are also great to play for free once we get to combo off with Bombardment. Just avoid playing too many low-impact cantrips that uh, don't necessarily generate mana, don't really want to one mana cantrips, for instance, or burn spells that are too limited in scope. If they only deal one damage, like maybe a spike field hazard, then you're not too excited to play them with your Bombardment. But on the other hand, maybe also don't go overboard, including cards like Explosive Singularity in the hopes of exiling it with Bombardment, because that's a pretty bad card if you draw it otherwise, whereas cards like Magma Opus we can realistically cast and can also use it to make a treasure early on, and has kind of that natural discard outlet built in, so we don't necessarily need another way of discarding it. So yeah, very happy with how this played out, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.